Hello, and welcome to this one signal guide for prompting for web push permissions. In this guide, we'll cover all the different types of web push prompts that you can use in OneSignal, including our slide down prompt, category prompts, bell icon prompts, email and phone number prompts, custom prompts, and finally, native browser prompts. In this video, I'll be showing you how to set up each prompt as if you were using our typical site setup. If you'd like to know how to set up any of these prompts using our WordPress or custom code setups, please visit our guide at documentation.onesignal.com. Let's begin by setting up a slide down prompt. I've set up a demo page so we can see how each of these work. If I go to our OneSignal dashboard, then go to settings, then platforms, then web and settings, and then scroll down, find the option for the permission prompt setup. I already have a custom link set up, but I'm going to delete this so we can start from scratch. To add a prompt, go to add prompt, go to push prompt, and then we'll select push slide prompt. You'll see on the right hand side here a preview of what the prompt looks like for now, with our logo for the website included. Here we've got the auto prompt settings to show after one page view and delay it by 10 seconds. I'm going to change this to two seconds for testing purposes. You can customize the slide prompt by toggling this option here. And within this, you'll have various options for customizing the prompt. We can change the text, and we can also change the labels on the buttons. After we've finished customizing, we can see the preview on the right hand side near the desktop or mobile view. Finally, let's click done and scroll down to the bottom of the page and click save. On the next page, we scroll down and click finish. And finally, if we return to the web page and refresh the page, we'll see the slide down prompt appear. Next, let's set up a category prompt. As we already have a push prompt set up, Let's edit this and turn it into a category prompt by scrolling down and clicking on categories. When customizing your category prompt, you'll see an option for label. This is the label of the category that will appear in the prompt. The tag key is the name of the tag that will be added to the user when they select that category. Let's try adding a few in now as an example. You'll see that as we add each category, it appears on the preview in the right hand side. You can have up to 10 categories in a category prompt. When you've finished adding all your categories, you can update the instructions above with the categories as well. Finally, you can also change the labels on the buttons for the prompt. As you finish customizing your prompt, click Done, then Save, and you should be able to see it appear in your website. Let's untick a few of these and then subscribe and see what that does to our user. If we go to Audience and then Subscriptions, and then click on our user, we should be able to see that under the User Tags section, they have a 1 next to each of the categories they subscribe to, and a 0 next to those that they did not. Next, let's add a bell icon to our site that our users can use to subscribe and unsubscribe at will. When you choose the bell icon prompt type, you'll see that the bell appears in the bottom right hand corner of your web page. You can also see that there are some customization options for the subscription bell, including size, location, colors, and general position. You can also choose to hide the bell when the user is subscribed. Finally, you can customize the text that goes along with the bell icon, including the hover over text that appears when the user is in their various different subscription states. You can also customize the messages that are shown to users when they choose to subscribe or unsubscribe, as well as the dialogue options when the user clicks on the bell. Once finished, click done and then save to set the subscription bell live. If we go back to our site, we'll see that the subscription bell is only present on the screen as long as there is not another prompt showing. Hovering over the bell gives our tooltip message and clicking on it brings up the native prompt. Once we're subscribed, we'll see the thank you message and hovering over the bell again will show that it gives us the option to unsubscribe. It also minimizes the bell when the bell is subscribed and when you click on it, you get the unsubscribe dialog appear. Email and phone number prompts work in a similar way to the slide down prompt, but allow you to enter an email and or phone number. Doing so will subscribe users to your email or SMS services respectively. Under the customization options, we can see that you can change the icon, you can change the text above the inputs, you can change the input names, the button values, and also the confirmation message when users subscribe. You can also choose to hide either the email address or phone number input if you don't want to capture that. And finally, you have the auto prompt settings just as in the slide down prompt. Finally, we click done and then save to set the prompt live. 
going back to our site, we can see the prompt appear from the top as with the slide down. Here, we can enter an email address and a phone number. With the phone number, we can select the country option from a list of options. After submitting our inputs, we get a thank you message, and then if we return to OneSignal and go to our subscriptions page, we can see that the SMS and the email for that user have been created as new subscription records. Custom prompts allow you to add a link or button to your website to allow your users to subscribe or unsubscribe at will. When setting up a custom prompt, you can change the text of the button itself, the explanation text that appears above, you can change whether it is a button or a link, change the size of the button, the colour, the font colour, and the text in the case of an unsubscribe link. Unlike with other prompt types, a custom prompt requires you to put a small bit of code in your website to place the prompt on the screen in your desired location. You'll see this code on the setup screen, but also on the final screen underneath your initialization code. To add the prompt to your site, copy the code and then include it within your HTML at the location you want the button to be displayed. I already have the code in my HTML page, so when I refresh my site, I can see the button appear. As with the bell icon, clicking the button shows the native prompt. Finally, we have native browser prompts. You can add this to the push prompt menu again, but please note that native browser prompts are not recommended. One reason for this is that several browsers will not show the native prompt if it is not triggered by clicking on something else first. Secondly, by using one of our OneSignal prompts, you can prompt the user multiple times in a way that you can't do with the native prompt. The only customization option for the native prompt is the delay before it's shown. Once you've done this, click done, save, and you'll see it appear on your site. Thank you for watching. For more information, visit our documentation at documentation.onesignal.com. Here you'll find more information on each of the different types of prompts, including how to set them up for WordPress and custom code sites.